So here's what we're going to try to do in 30 minutes, right? We're going to talk about why we built our ELMS management tool. ELMS Enterprise Learning Management System. It's sort of our categorization of, of all those things, Canvas being our central point. How we decide what we're going to build, how it works, what the key technologies are, and what are our most important tools, and, well, the last one, that's sort of a Maryland thing, right? So we're not really going to talk about fearing the turtle. Uh, so, very quickly, about uh, the University of Maryland. We're big and we're bad. Bad mean good, means good, right? So we're located right outside of uh, District of Columbia. 37,000 plus students, 4,300 instructors at one time or another, 15 colleges and schools. So, so we're big. So we need help, right? We, we don't have a huge staff, so we need a lot of help, which is why we distribute. So uh, another quick char uh, characterization of our Canvas implementation, right? Uh, July 2012, we selected Canvas. January 2, 2013, campus-wide. No transition. One-step transition. We stopped one system, brought the other one in. So uh, the top is year one implementation. A lot of numbers, but the big numbers are at the top that we had, uh, what, do we, what do we have? Uh, published courses, eight th over 8,000. Published sections, over uh, 19,000. So down at the bottom, year two so far, we start in winter 2014, that we see a continued increase in the use of Canvas, not only by uh, faculty, but more importantly by students. So the big number at the, uh, on the right-hand side, don't hold me to these numbers, they're kind of <laughs> they're, they're loose, we're still working on figuring out our metrics, but about 89% of our students are engaged in one Canvas course or another and about 61% of all instructors have a course that they published in Canvas. So we've got, we've got a high participation rate. So, so we need help, right? So we built an ELMS management tool because what we had to do is we, we locked down a lot of functionality in Canvas, right? We don't let people create courses. We don't let people delete courses. We don't let people add uh, students. We don't let people add instructors, right? So we sort of lock all that down, but we have to make it flexible enough so people can do what they need to do. And that's what EMT, the Elms Management Tool, does. So the reasons are, well, there are some university and FERPA things that we must comply with, right? Students, no, not everyone can have access to the student data, so we have to be able to lock that down. Uh, also, university, our, one of our university policies is is that if you want to wait, if you want to have a student audit the class, you don't just add them in, you have to, you have to register them, right? So there's some university FERPA things that we need to comply with. Also, we needed to build a tool so our, uh, our, our admins out in the colleges can help with some of this heavy lifting, uh, right? And finally, uh, we have a homegrown SIS system and a homegrown uh, grade collection system. So Canvas out of the box doesn't talk to it, so we needed to accommodate that. So we have a, I'm going to spend just a little bit of time. We uh, came from another LMS. We had a tool like this before. We had a short period of time to sort of build the same little tools that we had for the old LMS and put it into Canvas. But then we continue to develop, right? This tool was never done. So we have a process that we bring our stakeholders together. We have them prioritize their needs. We build, we prototype. We take it back out, we have them test it, get more feedback. We uh, develop in a production control environment where we have a dev environment, a QA environment, and a production environment. So uh, we're, we're a small shop, right? Rasat, I didn't, I didn't introduce you, stand up. This is our development team, <laughs> right? <laughs> Thanks, Rasat. Uh, so, we have to try to do things the right way, but we're small, we're, we're like a startup, right? So we're, we're, we're building things ourselves. So where does Canvas, where does EMT live within Canvas? So here's Canvas out in the cloud, like everybody. Here is our SIS down here, and we have to do what everybody does, right? And here's what everybody does. They take information from schedulers, 
they take information from the registrar, it sits out here in a database somewhere, then you create CSV files and you pop them up. We do it uh, a couple of different ways. 11.30 every night, we load everything. Starting at 8 a.m. every day, every two hours we do incrementals, right? So we're basically picking things up from 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 12 you know, p.m., and then we, we run it again, a full load at 11.30 p.m. And the re we, we should be able to just do the incrementals, right? But we want to make sure we don't miss anything. So since it's 11.30 at night, we just run the whole thing again. Okay? Sounds familiar, right? And then LDAP sits over there for our, uh, for our users' files. So EMT sits here where we have our ELMS administrators out in the colleges and our instructors that need certain things done. What do they like to do? They like to take sections out of one course and merge it in with another. They like to take sections out of one course and create a course to itself in Canvas, right? So in other words, they're kind of unmerging a section. They like to be able to add people. Well, they can add some and we can add others. They like to be able to submit grades, create special spaces, right? I want an organizational space for my Terrapin Appreciation Club. They like to be able to change permissions of users, and they want to be able to add students off of a wait list into a class. And then after a while, your course list gets so huge, you like to be able to hide some of those things so you really only focus on it. So these are the kinds of things that EMT does. So it's sitting out here, it's a web-based system, and we'll talk a little bit more about the technology uh, in, in, a little in a little while. And what, what happens is that for EMT to work, we need to pull data out of SIS, and we need to pull data out of Canvas and have it live within EMT so we can do those functions. After someone says like, well, maybe I wanna take a section out of this course and create an your own custom course space for that, then that data needs to go immediately back up into Canvas. And it goes up in a couple of ways. If it's, uh, it either goes up in the API or the, or sys import. And if you want to know the difference, Rasoc will have those <laughs> answers, right? Rasoc built this thing. So that's how we get things happening real time. But let's say we change somebody who's in the system, who's in there as a TA, we want to change their permissions to a greater which is kind of a limited TA, if you're familiar, and we write that thing up to Canvas, well, when our sys import happens again at 11.30 p.m., it's gonna overwrite that. So what we, uh, this is sort of the key to the way the whole thing works. Everything we do in EMT, we also log it over in our database for our daily feeds. So, so we make a change in EMT, it sits over here, and then as our sys import comes in, it runs up against it and says, nope, don't let that sys import go through. Let the change that we made in EMT go through. So that's sort of the heart of the system right there. And then finally, we do have a, uh, a little special uh, identity management system that lets us create uh, accounts for people who don't have university accounts. And then that sort of feeds into LDAP. So conceptually, that's where it lives, and that's how it works. Okay? Sounds pretty simple, right? Well, it's not. These are the technologies that Rasak has used to build EMT. So it's not like building web pages, right? So Rasak is a Java developer, works with our database staff, also manages a lot of the database, and uses these technologies that I can only read to you and he could explain them to you, okay? So, I wanna spend most of the time sort of demoing some of these tools and show you how they work. But before I, before I do that, are, are there any sort of general questions about what I've shared so far? This, oh, oh you'd think. We'll, we'll have, I, I know I'm kind of zipping through a lot of this stuff. This, I get, these things are going to be available, right? So, so if you don't feel like jotting everything down, you can do it later.
Okay, so some of the tools I'm going to show you, how you can merge and unmerge, add or request different users, create special spaces, change some permissions, and then uh, submit grades. And to do that, I'm going to do sort of a live demo, so hopefully the network will be working like it was earlier today. So, uh, let's see here. Yeah, and I'm going to figure out where my mouse is here, too. Oh, logged out. That's okay. Except I can't see it. Ah. All right, let me just back up here. All right. Okay, so working in our dev environment, our dev environment connects to our Instructure test canvas environment, so it's a little slower, right? So as you see things taking a bit of time, just know that, well, it's dev, right? <laughs> it's a dev and test environment. So again, it's a, it's a web-based tool. It's got some, you know, we put some announcements here up top, and all throughout the tool, you'll see this little question mark, right? And that's where you go for help about each specific tool. It's a role-based tool. I'm a super admin. I get all the tools for everybody. We've got college admins who get most of the tools for the people in their college. We have instructor tool access, and an instructor will go in and just see their courses. Right? So it's all role-based. Uh, we're working on uh, creating more roles to make it more useful to more people. All right, so real quickly, here is, here's that scenario where I've got, I want to take a, uh, get, get a uh, instructor up here. Let me get it up real quick because it's going to take a while to load. Here's an instructor, fall 2000. Oh, spelled it wrong. Thank you, Rasak. So it's pulling, it's pulling information out of Canvas right now for fall 2014. And what we're going to do is uh, this person's got all these different courses, and they want to take sections from one course and merge it into another. So I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to start with my Chem 131 class. Here are all the sections that are currently mapped into Chem 131. Uh, here are other sections that B. Dixon has that aren't in Chem 131, but she wants to put one of them in, right? So she wants to put 131S in, moves it over. So now she's going to have a co one course space with all the 131 sections and the 131S section. Hit submit. Ah, <laughs> too quick. What happened? Uh, a little confirm screen. If I hit confirm, okay, what it's doing now, because I didn't launch Canvas test, is it's going to go out and start up Canvas test, go ahead and make that move, and then I can click here, and I'm not going to, and I could see it actually happen in, I'd see that, that, uh, that course with the, the additional section in Canvas. All the enrollments will flow nicely into it. So that's merging courses. The opposite is unmerging. Let me see if I got my right person here right. So instructor Jan, and, and if Jan, directory ID name, if Jan logged in, she wouldn't have to go through this, right? Just her courses would already be there. So here are her sections. She's got one course, AASP100. And in that course, there are two sections. But she wants, one, she wants a different course space for each section. Right? So she says, okay, well, I'm going to siphon this one off, submit it up. Do I want to confirm that I want a whole new course space for that? Hit confirm, then off it goes. So now she's got two independent course spaces. Okay, so merging, unmerging. Question, yep? No. Well, that, that, it's a good point. Uh, gr Typically, people don't start merging and unmerging well into the term. Content stays put, right? So if you've got a parent course and you siphon a section off, content stays in that parent course 
no content in the new course, but you would export import, right? If you, if you, if you already had some stuff over, then you wanted to move it over. Okay? So there's merging and unmerging. What did I want to do next? Manage enrollments. No, terms flow in with our sys imports. And so that, that drop down you saw would show all different terms and they could pick whichever one they wanted. Okay, so manage enrollments. Uh, lots of different roles. We've got 13 different roles in Canvas now. Some of them people can't add. Students, well, you're, gonna, you're looking at my screen, right? So I'm a super admin, I can do things other people can't do. But some things they can do. Instructors can say, I want to add instructional colleagues, I want to add a guest instructor, I want to add an observer. They can go in and pick a course, and I think I'm going to do hmm, ZDeb. ZDeb in the audience? Where's ZDeb? Is she here? No. Nope. Okay, so I pick her. Uh, loading courses from. Test Canvas, search and form. So what's going to happen here is that her courses, oh, sorry, I picked the wrong. Yeah, I wanted to do fall 13. So do that again. So what's going to happen is her courses are going to come up. I can add somebody either at the course level or at the section level. So I pick the course here. I'm going to add somebody at the section level, and I go add their directory ID here. Now, the reason you see instructors, students, and TAs, at the super admin level, we can temporarily add somebody in. Let's say an instructor got added in the section at 8 a.m. They want in right now. They're not going to show up in our sys feeds until tomorrow. So we can call the registrar, say, yep, they've been assigned to that section, we'll add them in. So they'll be in now, even though they normally flow in during the night. So I'm going to go ahead and add myself in, put in the directory ID, and I'm going to put myself in as an observer. Oh, I spelled my wrong name wrong. Thanks for some. I've submitted it. It's taken a while. It's going to uh, show the history down here. And sooner or later, I'm going to show up down here, and I can go straight into Canvas. Let's see. Do we dare? Let's see what. Let's see if it actually showed up. Okay, so here, here is that course in Canvas. And if I, what did I say? I put myself in it as a, as an observer. Where is it? Down here. And there I am. So I've added myself into that course. Uh, designers are a FERPA course, uh, a FERPA role, so we can't let uh, instructors just add designers in, but they can request a designer in here. So they put a request in, it fires off an email to one of us, we confirm that everything's good uh, FERPA-wise for, for a designer, then we go ahead and fulfill the request. So there are a couple of different ways it works. You know, you can do it yourself or you can make requests. Okay? Uh, so the, the notion of organizations. You've got a club. Anybody can come in and create their own organization. It creates a non-term-based Canvas space that they're managing. And I'm not going to run through this whole interface, but basically, uh, I'm going to be the leader. I'm going to give it a name. It's going to generate a short name. I'm going to pick the kind of organization it is. Well, let me just go ahead and do one. Right? Test. Short name is going to be test. It's going to be a committee. So it creates this unique Canvas ID. DIT is the Division of Information Technology. It's a committee, and its name is test. I could put a couple of notes in here. I click it create the organization, it's in Canvas for me to use and manage. Okay? So creating organizations. Uh, the other one, a custom Elm space. Now, you know in Canvas, 
a course can only have one space, right? But sometimes there's a need for a second space. And here's an example. I teach uh, mm, a, cup, a couple of different psychology courses, and I want to bring those students from different course spaces into one course space for some unique event, like the final exam or something, right? So what I can do is I can create, uh, who did I want to do here? RCO. Well, this is loading. So Marcio is going to have a bunch of different courses with sections in it. And let's say that he's uh, you know, doing that final exam thing. So he wants to take the sections from, what is this, uh, JEMS, blah, 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 and he wants to combine those, right? So he does that. He can call this, uh, the course name sort of populated itself. But I'm going to do, uh, this is going to be my exam section, my exam course. Right? I can choose to go ahead and load those student enrollments right now, click Submit, and there'll be a second Canvas course space with those people from those sections over in the custom, what we call custom course space, and they'll also be in their regular course space. Right? So they're in two different course spaces. Now the challenge for instructors are, is you can only use one grade book if you're going to submit. Right? So if you create a custom course space, you need to know what you're going to be doing in each of the sections and where you want the, the grade book to live. All right? Custom course spaces. And finally, submitting grades. Now, again, we have a homegrown grade collection system. And I know Canvas has a way of moving grades out of Canvas into those popular systems, right? We don't have one of those. So we had to build an interface ourselves. So it works just like, like the other tools. Let's see, who did I want to use? VDEV again. Spring, no, fall, VDEV. And it works pretty much uh, like within, uh, within Canvas, where I pick a section. There's the section I want. I decide what my grading scheme is going to be. I create a grading scheme here. And what it does is it pulls the scores out of Canvas and lets me decide what the grading scheme is here. And then it will take those scores, translate them into letter grades, and then we push them off. Now, I'm not going to show you the kids' grades. Now, I wouldn't do that, would I? <laughs> right, so I have to uh, go back really quick. Maybe. Where did it go? Oh, right, right, right. Uh, and that's sort of what it looks like. You know, I blurred out the kids' names, right? So it brought the current score over from Canvas, applied the grading scheme that Deb applied, gave it letter grades, and there'd be another little button down here that says, okay, send them off to the grading system. Okay? So those are the tools that some of the popular ones that we already have in place. Real quickly, these are the ones that we're going to get, we're, we're starting to build. The notion that there's this huge long list of Canvas courses in my, my courses, my inbox, my calendar, right? I want to limit them. That's what the Hive Reveal is going to do. We want to move a certain number of kids off a wait list into my class during the wait list period. I'm teaching a class, I know I have five students usually added from the wait list. I'll type in the number five, right? And the five top people off the wait list just show up in my Canvas course. Boy, I made that one sound easy. <laughs> it's, it's not, right? And we're gonna, uh, we're gonna expand our admin roles. We're going to uh, include student access at some point on some functions. And then finally, uh, saving course configurations, which I don't even wanna get into. It's too weird. So, there's our contact information. Any questions? Yes? Um, I have a couple of questions about the uh, organization of the staff. I believe you mentioned a framework that you created for that. Well, right now, any staff? Sure. Staff. Oh, yes. Uh, about uh, organizational spaces. Who can create organizational spaces? Staff, right? Anybody who, right now, students can't.
That's right. In an organizational space, I'll repeat the question in my answer, uh, staff can, you know, in an organizational space, they can manage the enrollments within Canvas, right? Organizational spaces are different than term-based spaces, so they can add people in, in Canvas. So the question was, can, can we, do we have a way that groups can be automatically managed? Right now, we do not have a way to do that. It is a request, and uh, it's probably on our list somewhere. Yeah. Right, so the question was, if I had guest instructors, instructional colleagues, do they have to have accounts? Well, most of them do have to have accounts. A guest instructor, though, is a special case where you know, you're know you gonna bring somebody in just for a short period of time. So I didn't demo demonstrate it, but we have that special identity management system. We go in and create an, a, a Canvas account for them that only gives them access to Canvas, and then that loads them in that Canvas course, and then we'll take them out when the instructor says you know, they're no longer. So it's a mixed bag, right? Some, some in, some out. Question, yeah. For uh, guest instructor? Okay. Correct. Guest instructors do not have the same permissions. It's a whole different role as regular instructors. So, so seeing the grade book, for instance. Yes. So the question was, is there pushback on using tools? Well, uh, we do have some instructors that do it for themselves, but the, our college admins are really the people who are doing the heavy lifting at the different colleges, and they don't push back on using the tool. They're the ones who are driving the creation of the tool. Uh, one more question? Yes. Okay, so the question is, how do you reconcile uh, grade submissions and courses that are, have been merged, right? Students are assi assigned to sections. Sections move from course to course. When we submit grades, they're submitted by the section, not the course. Thanks a lot. We'll hang around for other questions. Rasak can answer uh, a, a lot of technical questions, too. So thanks a lot.